<laughs> so anyway, how are you doing today? Okay, so hello Rhonda. Hey everybody. I know I'm starting later than normal. Uh but uh and hopefully you guys I'm turning up the mic so you can hear me better. Um I'm starting a little bit later than normal because I'm freezing. Okay? I can't get warm. There isn't enough like warm in the world. And uh yeah, so have you guys noticed something? I thought this was funny. And I thought this was so, so funny. I had to go live to talk about the sheer insanity of it all. So here is... <laughs> so it's March 27th. Um, Mother's Day is in May. Okay? Usually, usually, we don't start seeing Mother's Day stuff until like April. Why are they coming out with it so early this year? Hmm. It's like, hmm, me harping on stuff seems to be happening. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm making it better for all, all y'all in paparazzi land. So, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, paparazzi peeps. You are so welcome. Because me pointing out the irony and the stupidity and all of that. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, yeah, like, give me one second. I gotta let everyone know that we're live. Okay, live now. Live now. Okay, so anyway. Hi, Katie. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you forever. How have you been? So anyway, uh, paparazzi. Uh, let's go to the Facebook page first because they made a huge announcement today. Uh, so sneak peek. Oh, look, we have something... It's called Mesmerizing Depths of Green or something. Ring of the Day, something green. Don't think so, but thanks. And then, oh, we have Sneak Peeks with Misty. <laughs> we'll watch that in a second. Uh, and then Pineapple Flare. Let worries disappear in the tropical air. <laughs> I'm like, because everybody needs a tennis racket with rhinestones on it. But that was just... That was the first thought that popped in my brain just now. It's like, ooh, a tennis racket. <laughs> Doesn't it kind of look like a... Hi, Sarah. Doesn't it look like a tennis racket to you guys? I mean, I, I, I'm i just saying. I'm cold. I'm cold. But yeah, I, I need to laugh and, and talk with people outside outside the house. So that's why I decided I'm like, last night, I'm like, I'm going to go live. <laughs> So apparently we have a uh, purple tennis, uh, pineapple tennis racket earrings. I wonder if you can get those on Timu too. I bet if we looked, we could find them. What do you guys want to bet? I mean, I'm just, yeah. So everybody hit the heart button, like the stream, do all the things. Um, let's see. And then with a great hat comes great responsibility and style. I have so many thoughts right now. So many thoughts. Cause you guys, I did it, I did a live a few weeks ago where we talk about stuff and with a great hat comes great responsibility and style. Do I need to bring it up again? Okay. Let me pull open the image that I showed a while ago. And... All right, let me find it. Let me find it. Here it is again. Let me just put it up here. You know. It's just, it makes me mad. Okay, so. Uh, save image. Okay, saving the image. All right, let me make this big again. With a great hat become, comes great responsibility. I'm sorry. I feel all of these things are a little bit uh, cult of personality in nature. Just my humble opinion. So paparazzi, that's an epic fail. I'm just going to put that out there. That is a major epic fail. Oh, they they put on their website, babe. 
With a great hat comes great responsibility and style. <laughs> With a great what? With a great hat. Um, yes. Instead of the MAGA hat, it's the paparazzi hat. They're ripping off Uncle Ben from Spider-Man? Uh, I guess. With great power comes great responsibility. It's not even a great hat. I know. It's a shitty hat. <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, anyway. Cringe. Are you eating my fried rice? Okay, I'm like, you better not be eating my fried rice, too. I'm going to eat that for lunch. Okay, enjoy your sushi. <laughs> I'm like bogarting my fried rice. <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm just cold. I'm currently in school. Ooh, congratulations, Katie. That's great. Oh, I'm glad you caught me live too. What's your favorite class this semester? You know, business education is good. Dave, Rhonda says hi. He says hi, Rhonda. He's in a meeting. <laughs> Um, so yeah. All right. So, uh, let's go back. We'll, we'll do, uh, should we start sneak peeks with Misty? We can start making fun of this now, but. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, yesterday we were talking about how she dehumanizes her consultants by saying, Hey, paparazzi. So let the dehumanization, uh, dehumanization begin with your leader people. And then let's talk about style and substance and all the other things that come along with brainwashing. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be so much fun. Hey, paparazzi, it's Wednesday and time for sneak peeks. And I am so excited about the pieces that I'm going to show you today. What is she going to show us today? Um, I see layered looks and other things in the background. But um, first, we're going to talk about the fact that she's wearing a jumper. It's denim styled. You know, because denim jumpers are all the rage right now. And then she's wearing the silver choker and then a big silver ring, probably the one that's still sitting in the back office with two bangles. And then what earrings is she wearing? I don't know. Microeconomics, that was a good class. But you know what? I want to know where are my friends at? I know that you are my friends because we you watch me each time that I go live. But I want <laughs> I'm not your friend, Misty, but I watch you every time you go live. So let's see. Um, let's see. You know what? I want to know where are my friends at? I know that you where are my, my friends, friends because we, you watch me each time that I go live. But I want to know where are you located? Go ahead and drop in the comments this. Get my algorithms up. Drop your. I mean, honestly, I don't care if you guys watch or not. This is just me having some social interaction. It doesn't matter any way, shape, or form. But that seems a little crazy. State or and narcissistic city that you're viewing from. I, like I had like one friends. like that yeah, in so the late fun. 80s too, now, and it was we're denim. Let's start with the outfit that I am wearing. I am wearing a blue jumpsuit, head to toe, the Who same cares, color. Misty. It buttons down the front and actually pulls together with a tie. I've actually just tied it in a knot and let the strings or the tail of it hang long. I feel like pulling it in. How would that? I'm sorry. If you okay, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say something. If you have bladder control issues, that would be an impossible outfit to go to the bathroom in. You would have to unbutton all the buttons and take it down past. I mean, sorry, but this is not a practical outfit for a woman who has bladder control issues. So, I put your depends on, I guess. I don't know. In in the center gives me just a bit of a silhouette. I love the brown buttons, and I feel like it starts to look like a natural. Just pointing material. out obvious things. So I paired I would with never a brown wear pill. that outfit. Now this is more or of those a shoes, chunky because I would You can see the bottom an is cork. I like cork with this outfit because I think again it ties in the buttons and starts. I like cork because it ties in the buttons. Nobody cares about your shoes. Nobody cares about your outfit. Why do we have to go over this again and again and again? She, yeah, well, moment, my brain hurts too. But, you know, we are here to see sneak peeks with Misty. Not Missy. This is not. In, in fact, maybe we should just change the name of it. Misty Kirby's Fashion Show. Narcissistic Fashion Show with a few pieces of crappy $5 jewelry thrown in for good measure. To look more like a natural material. It's so but I can tax write off buttons, my clothes. I can almost any color of metal I want with it. 
I chose silver largely because this necklace sold out yesterday, but it is one of my favorites. So I wanted to wear it today. And then I have got silver accessories that oh are gosh, currently I'm available dying. online paired with it. So if you got no. this choker, make sure you go get these bracelets and this ring because it's so flippin' cute. All right, let's get started. It's so with flipping this something. Necklace. Now listen, this is so fun. It is definitely playful. You can see right here it's gonna This is so fun and so playful. <laughs> come down to a pendant style. I it's love the over exaggerated paper, paper clip chain. chain. And then you can see that purple. These are acrylic pieces, but they almost well, have a sheen didn't that looks a lot shell. like shell. You can see like almost a mother of pearl type look inside there. I feel like it's very mermaid but cork. It's now obviously it's she's playful being because of the shape. It's a heart. No and shit, the color. Sherlock. I think this is perfect for spring. And largely when you're talking about dopamine dressing or you want to wear something fun <sighs> that sets the mood, this is definitely one. Dopamine now, dressing. Now because it comes down to almost a white seat. type shape. I feel like that is very flattering. It can be really cute on a V neck. If you have a deeper V, this is a good shape of necklace to wear in that. Okay, couple things. One, she was honest about the material. She said it was acrylic. She didn't say it was shell. She said it gave a mother of pearl like feature to it. So I, I call this a win. In my humble opinion, I call it a win. She is being accurate in the description of the shit that she's selling to people. So that's that's one, that's a win. This is an acrylic thing and it's a heart. Uh, no, really, it's a heart? Okay, so let's see if she's honest with the next piece that she shows. Now this is a really fun one. This is an earring that I feel like goes with so many things. So this is a silver, but you can see right there, you've got white or crystal rhinestones. They're not crystal. They're just white pieces of glass. So take the crystal out of it next time, Misty, and just say it ha it's a silver earring with white rhinestones or glass. With white glass. That would be nice. Now, because the rhinestones are scattered and so delicate, I feel like really what you're going to see is a lot they're of They're not delicate. They're silver, poorly but they're glued in. Some white or neutral yeah. sparkle they're inside of there. These are very lightweight. I feel. What did you say? Delicate, so they break, it's your fault. Delicate, so they break, it's your fault. <laughs> we told you, we weren't. They, they're delicate, so they're going to break easily. <laughs> they're, not cheap. they're delicate. Right? Oh, hi, Helen. I didn't see you pop in. Hi, Helen. <laughs> so, like, because the sparkle is quite subdued, it's you can also make sparkle. them quite casual. So it's a good pairing earring to wear with a lot of different things. Now, oh, this goodness. one I think is so beautiful. This is a deeper brown. You can see right there. It it's a poop drop. It's a poop drop with a Superman S around it. Is it a skinny back poop drop? I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It is a cat's eye. Okay, it's not material, a cat's eye. It's a piece of plastic. that sheen. And then coming across the top, you can see that you have got that metal and then just a little bit of sparkle. You can see actually here sideways. Okay, so it looks like it's barely holding into place on that ring, but it's got the arch over it. So it's like the golden arches, but instead it's a silver arch. And it's a resin piece of plastic made to look like a cat's eye moonstone. But again, I'm going to accurately describe the jewelry now. This is a resin piece of plastic on a skinny, stretchy band ring. Uh, with a silver S going over it to make it look more elegant than it really is. And it's in the color of poop. Ways that there is a bit of space between the Ooh, pickleball. And the oh, what did I think of that? Like bowing over the top. I think this ring is totally a statement ring. And I love the brown color. I think sometimes in spring people are like, oh, I would never wear brown. I love how, okay, I'm just going to go back a little bit. And uh, when she this says brown, totally I'm going to pause it and see if we can get it. And the... I love the brown color. I think sometimes in spring people. Even when she says she loves the brown color here, her face is like, oh, no, I don't like the brown color that much. <laughs> I mean, that's what I think of. I mean, she's making a face of disgust when she talks about brown. But, you know, that's that's just my opinion. 
people are like, oh, I would never wear brown. But yeah. actually, there are a lot of cases when you would, especially if you're wearing brown. I'm wearing brown right now. Usual, but black seems it's actually harsh. camel. Brown is a really pretty color to or, drop or in latte. there to give it just a little bit more of a subtle tone. Or coffee made now, of coffee. Now, this is a fun earring. I absolutely love this earring. You're going to see it's high sheen gold. This is a post back. I absolutely love these earrings. They're so cute and they're so fun. And this has a high sheen post back and it's a triangle. It's a square on an angle to make it look like a princess cut, but it's bent at the post to give you more movement and flow and sparkle. But the little danglies in it could get cut, caught in your hair and cause pain. It's really pretty. And get I bent. love the texture on that post part. Like look at that linear texture, but Ooh. it creates tons and tons of sheen. And then coming down Gee, to that cascade of chain. Well. Now, this is so did. beautiful. This is like snake chain. So actually when you touch it, it's quite silky and soft. I love that it has a blunt edge. A blunt edge inside your hairline is going to give a lot of movement, but definitely you'll see the base or the ending of the earring. Is she a hair stylist now with a blunt edge? It gives you a lot of movement, but it's straight. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Okay, just no. No. And that's quite a powerful look when you're talking about wearing statement earrings, which this most definitely blunt is. Edge and I feel like this has power. a lot of ability to coordinate with okay. a lot of different pieces. Blockbusters, obviously, when we've got the layered chains that we have in the golds, you can wear this with the layered look, or if you want to wear it more of a pendant style. I don't think so. Now listen, this is such a fun necklace, and it's a multicolored. So when I show it to you, I want you to drop in the comments right now, after you see this, what color of shirt you think that you would wear. Now listen, oh my god, what color shirt would you wear with this? Um, white? Maybe black, maybe. Um, who the hell cares? I I vote for number three. Nobody cares. <laughs> Wear first with this necklace. So many options. No, there isn't a right or wrong answer. So go ahead. Nobody cares. Comments. What color of shirt would you wear this with? This is a layered silver. And then look at all those colors you have on those rings. Red and yellow and pink and green. Um, it's enamel paint. Kind of looks like the, the necklace Erica showed on her Facebook page the other day. But this one has just little rings. Little rings of enamel paint on them. But, you know, that one was $60 and this one's only $5. But anyway, um, look at the cheapness of the chain. Uh, we've got a cheap paperclip chain, a cheap big silver loopy chain and then a wonky looking chain with the with the charmies on it yay so you've got an orange a green a blue a pink and a purple the pink goes all the way around this no, sphere really and i love again that layered look often you would have to purchase three different <laughs> necklaces to get this layered look but in the case of paparazzi you're purchasing just one for those of you that are just listening right now mlm no said, no shirt, let them nips nop free. <laughs> I'm like, you should make a Facebook or an Instagram post about that. To give you oh that. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, I also feel like if you wanted to make this more of a neck mess <laughs> look or add to the layering, you could definitely add a choker in here if you wanted, or you could drop a longer layer below. How also, many layers do we need to have for the pieces that you would accessorize with? Again, you can pick up on one of those colors. This is exhausting. In an earring or a bracelet or a ring if you wanted, or you could play on the silver tone. I need so you to buy at least five pieces for every outfit you own. Now, this is a really fun ring. This is also a purple, that. but a deeper color. I love this. So this reflects almost. Um, That doesn't look like glass. Kind of looks like resin to me. Doesn't it kind of look like resin to you with two glass rhinestones on it? But look at the frame of that. It's got a dot motif and everything. It's so cute. It's like an opal wood, but this is a resin material. And then look <laughs> I was the right. detail around the outside of the ring. It's a filigree type look. So remember back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, maybe, maybe all of you, I mean, Marina, you might know. But back in the day, paparazzi rings actually had real rhinestones in them. They didn't or cracky stone in them. They didn't have resin rhinestones in them or plastic beads for the most part. Most of the time the rings actually had some quality to them. 
now we're just getting plastic with glass. But you know, it's worth $5 to me. Okay, I'm reading the, that is really ugly. Helen, you are 100% correct there. So, um, let's see. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, you're right. She's going to end up look, looking like somebody at the airport that refused to check a bag, so she wears everything. <laughs> MLM, do you ever watch Refashioned Hippie? <laughs> she did a funny short the other day about outfits you wear to piss off the TSA. <laughs> it was funny. And then the top and bottom of this ring are anchored with a rhinestone. So pretty on. It's anchored you know with a here. rhinestone. So plastic anchored it's quite with tall glass. Up on my finger. So I feel like that's really fun it's if anchored you want to actually finger. have somebody look at Look at my arthritis knuckles. Sometimes guys. we wear dainty rings and we want it just as a subtle accessory. Oh, it's but so But oftentimes subtle. you think about Ooh. you talk with your hands, right? I talk with my hands a lot. You utilize your hands when you're typing or in the office at your grocery store. You hand them the credit card or you... <laughs> what? Okay, I just... A few seconds, I got to hear this word salad again. Let's see what she's talking about with why we wear rings. But oftentimes you think about, you talk with your hands, right? I talk with my hands a lot. You utilize your hands when you're typing or in the office at your grocery store, you hand them the credit card or you have, you know, the keys in your hand. If you want people to see that accessory, a dominant ring is a good thing to accessorize with. And this is definitely one of the. So when you hand over your credit card at the grocery store, not only does your credit card say paparazzi on it because you're using your your premier paparazzi debit card that says paparazzi on it to pay for your groceries, but you're showing off your dominant ring. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me right now? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, this is so bad. <laughs> No, no, just Those no pieces. Now we also have something fun to get today. The Mother's Day category is going to drop, but this is Erica. I'm just going to say that is never going to happen. Everything is so fun and she loves everything. <laughs> going to be a little bit different this year. You'll definitely see some pieces that are a nod to the sentimental Mother's Day theme. You'll also see pieces that are just great for Mother's Day gifts. But today you're going to see birth month flowers. So let me show you this. These are so fun. They're this so is fun. Actually <laughs> topaz, fun. The color topaz. And this is for the month of November. I chose it because my mom was actually born in the month of November. So you can. Yeah, Debbie, she actually looks somewhat decent, but she still spent two minutes describing the damn outfit. All right, so now she's showing us birthstone flowers. It's a layered necklace for those of you who are listening with a flower pendant silver disc and then above it a rhinestone glass colored like i guess that month's birthstone you can see okay then coming down okay you're gonna have the rhinestone each month has a rhinestone except for june okay it'll have a pearl there and then we have the flower of the month so again this one represents oh. november every month will be different now if you didn't want to wear oh. this as a birth month and you just like the flower good for you no one else will know right and it's a really really pretty piece but here's the fun part we also have that was probably a her garments her jesus jammies ear. so in this particular case this is topaz you can see like the amber undertone to this this will actually be called orange which i think will have have a direct matching stud earring so in this particular case what? this is topaz you can see like the amber undertone to this this will actually be called orange which i think is so beautiful see how deep and dark that oh, orange I have is we'll share these again in a second. each and every month has a different necklace with a different flower and a different colored earring they both match you can wear them independently or you can wear them as a set and they will be available in the Mother's Day category. Listen, paparazzi, it's going to be like the best Wednesday ever. I hope you have an incredible day. And most importantly, I hope you know you're loved. Love bombing and dehumanizing and lovely. Okay. Just absolutely lovely. Okay. So let's go to the Mother's Day category. All right. So let's open the first one. Birthstone Beauty. Okay. In blue. Okay. Does it tell you what the flower is? No. So I don't know what month this is. I don't even know what flower this is. Um, featuring a turquoise rhinestone in a silver frame. 
The most strand gives away to a classic silver pendant featuring embossed paper white flower, flawlessly displaying sentimental symbols that celebrate those born in December. So that's apparently December. In blue. Wow. All right, so let's see what this one says. Uh, this is May. Okay, so you get Lily of the Valley flowers on a pendant for May. And let me, let me just, so you guys can see this shit. Okay, so here's May. You got a Lily of the Valley flower. Doesn't that look like high quality sheen there? No, but okay. And then um, let's go to the next one. Oh, we've got, a, I guess that's a rose. So this is August and it's a poppy flower. That doesn't look like a poppy to me, but okay. And then there's uh, the green, but it doesn't look like, um, doesn't look like a Pyrrhidot green. It looks like puke green to me. All right, so uh, let's see. Birthstone Beauty in orange. Oh, gosh, this is this is too much for me. I'm sorry, but this is just too much. Okay, so what is that supposed to be? A chrysanthemum? So what's the flower? Oh, yep, chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum and topaz. Okay, that does look like a chrysanthemum. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, let me go back to the stupid Mother's Day category. Hold on. The fact that they have the Mother's Day category open still blows my mind. Okay, so um, we did the chrysanthemum. Now let's go see what this one is. All right, so now we have uh, red. And this is embossed snowdrop flower and... Um, the red is supposed to, I guess, be featuring a garnet. So that would be David's flower and David's birthstone. Ooh, ooh, ah. Okay. Um, so that's the first red. Where's the second red? This must be the July red. Okay. Maybe. So water lily and ruby for July. Okay, I'm just blown away at the quality of this stuff. I mean, it's just so gorgeous. And then birthstone beauty. This one has a rhinestone. This must be April because April is usually like diamond and daisy and diamonds. So April gets the posh birthstone, but then, okay. And then we have the pearl. I'm guessing the pearl is June. The glossy pearl. And then uh, in a rose. So yeah, the pearl and the rose. But that doesn't look like a rose to me. At all. Well, there's garnet red and then there's ruby red. So the ruby red is... Brighter red. The garnet's darker red. We'll put them up next to each other in a second. And then this one is white. And it looks like an opalescent thing, I guess, to look more like a opal in October, which is the October rhinestone is an opal. And then a marigold. Okay, this is just so, this is so dumb to me. All right, so let's go back into the, ooh, the pink diamond encore hasn't sold out yet. Wow, the Timu special hasn't sold out yet. Sorry, I just had a, a moment of, uh, whoa. People are getting sick and tired of uh, all these pink diamond and black diamonds. So here's the July rhinestone and here's the uh, January. As you can see, the July one kind of pops off the screen and the January is kind of darker. But yeah, we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a few months sold out. I didn't see September. So the sapphire blue one for September sold out. 
I don't know what else sold out. But look, Glamma is making its way back, you guys. There's an old Glamma necklace from back in the day. And then we have Justin Timeless. And then Bre Breathtaking Birthstone in White. So, yeah, the Breathtaking Birthstone in White didn't sell out because I'm sure people have plenty of Justin Timeless uh, blockbusters. I missed new releases today, but I'm not too upset by that. And the Colorful Cadet did not sell out. Modern Day Madonna is still there. The Fashion Fix piece is now available in silver. The Jubilee Jingle that came out in colors is now available in silver. Wow. Wow. And then, um, yeah. I'm not seeing... Oh. The stupid acrylic hearts didn't sell out. Not shocked. And then let's see. The poop ring didn't sell out. The plastic ring uh, anchored by glass didn't sell out. Uh, the green ring that was a sneak peek didn't sell out. And then we have hingy hoops and curly cues and the gold things and ear cuffs. Those didn't sell out. But still, they got quite a few people to take the bait on the new releases today, didn't they? Yeah, pretty sad. All right, let me pull up my emails so we can talk about the keynote speaker. Okay, so give me a second. It's time for Dare to Dream keynote speaker announcement. All right, you guys. Keynote speaker. Here we go. Okay, you guys ready for this one? This is going to be super duper fun. All right. Are you coming to Dare to Dream? We can't wait to get together with our paparazzi family, Colty, for the biggest party of the year. This is the year we've got a lineup of keynote speakers and entertainment that will have you on the edge of your seat to fall asleep, ready to launch your dreams into life. I'm falling asleep and doing a dreamlike thing. Hi, Steph, because this is so boring. Okay, our first keynote speaker who knows a thing about a thing or two about tapping into the power within to build something extraordinary all while dealing with the ups and downs of daily life like what i'm curious who the hell is this guy um he what i don't even know his name yet kevin brown Kevin Brown's unconventional path to business and personal success has taught him that winning in business and life requires anything but conventional thinking. With streetwise aptitude and never quit attitude, he worked his way from the front lines of business to the executive board boardroom. Uh-huh. Okay. For two decades, Kevin was a sales and marketing executive who helped grow Little-known family business into an industry giant with annual revenues reaching $2 billion. Ooh. Is this Kevin Brown? I know. LOL. Very common name. Yeah. Keynote speakers where you learn nothing about how to grow your own business. You just get to hear them toot their own horn. So I want to do a Google search for Kevin Brown. Hero. Oh my gosh. Okay, so there's a whole uh, video. Should we watch the video and give paparazzi a sneak peek? Okay, let's find out. We've been told, and you've probably heard this too, I, I grew up hearing this, this idea that heroes are ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I bet you've heard that too. And what I've learned through okay. this hero effect journey from studying hundreds of companies and, and looking at the great performers and, and world-class achievers is I think we've had it wrong. I think we've had it wrong this whole... Do you notice that he's doing the thing that he wants you to pay attention to him, so he's lowering his voice. I had it wrong. Now listen to me, and I'll tell you how you do it right. Oh, Steph, blood work is not fun. So, But yeah, let's keep listening to whatever this guy has to say time and where I've landed on this idea and why this message has resonated with so many different companies 
is that I wonder how much they paid for this guy to come and who show up every day and choose talk. not to be ordinary. Oh, now he's driving his Toyota no, Forerunner. Hundreds of times, and it's never been the same. I never give the same speech twice. There's core content that is. Oh, he's being driven. The there are principles and 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 ideas that I share with every audience. It looks audience, like he's up in Washington, honestly. With the theme and the outcomes and the takeaway. Elizabethtown, Louisville. Okay, so he's not in Washington. Is that the meeting planners and the owners and the, the senior leadership of these organizations, it's what they want to have happen. It's not forcing my message into their meeting, but rather tailoring my message to support their meeting. I said... So he tailors what his message is to support what they want. So he's... Okay, I can't... Yeah, I'm with you, Debbie. I'm falling asleep here. Um, so the Heroes Effect speakink.com. So let's go to Speak Inc. Speakink.com. Okay, let's look and see. Uh, let's see how much it would cost to get this Kevin Brown to come and speak to you. Looking for a keynote speaker? Let's type in Kevin Brown. All right, so uh, view speaker, contact Speak Inc. for fee. Okay. Okay, paparazzi, I don't even want to know what you spent for this keynote speaker, but um, I'm just blown away. So let's, let's go back. <clears throat> With streetwise aptitude and a never quit attitude, he worked his way up making a $2 billion industry. Wow. After a career in franchising that spanned 30 years, you can't franchise a paparazzi business. So how is this going to help paparazzi consultants in network marketing? Because you don't franchise anything. Kevin pursued his passion of bringing the hero effect message to as many organizations as possible. So he was a success. He was a successful franchiser, and he learned that he could make more money doing keynote speaking engagements and charge an exorbitant fee to people like network marketing companies, because he was successful in business. Okay, the hero's effect is a simple philosophy that separates a world-class class, world class organizations and high-performance people from everybody else. Huh? Okay. I don't know who that is either, and nor do I care, but apparently he's a big deal. Kevin now helps people expand their vision. Why, you know, develop their potential and grow their results. Again, how does somebody who is in franchising teach somebody who is a 1099 contracted employee of a network marketing, multi-level marketing company, expand their vision, develop their potential, and grow their results? Because here's the truth. If you're not already on the top, it's going to be next to impossible to get there. You have to get in early. You have to recruit a lot of people. Numbers are dwindling. Multi-level marketing uh, companies are seeing a vast decline in enrollments and in purchases and in popularity. And the more YouTubers like me speak out against them, the more damage they seem to deal with because people are sharing their truth and their experience and their loss and their detriment with the world and saying, don't make the same mistake I made. I mean, that's the whole reason I have this channel. Don't make the same mistake I made. And I never went to conventions, okay? So I would only want to see the black eyed peas. Like, I like them. They're supposed to be one of the musical. Oh, yeah. They were announced last week, Helen. And no idea who that is. So what does a hero stand for? That's how he drags him in. Oh, interesting. So what does a hero stand for? To me, I'm just going to say this. Heroes to me are my, my friends, my YouTube viewers, like Lady Deb, who went... And donated blood yesterday. 
So there's Deb donating blood yesterday. That's a hero. She saved lives by donating blood. And I love this. And I'm so grateful that Deborah did that. So Deborah, thank you again for donating your blood, which is also very much in short supply. She's O negative. So I appreciate that so much. She's still sore in Inflammation City, but healing and getting used to her insulin. Um, you know, that was me responding to her. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, anyway. Um, I got another email from one of you guys, but I'll read it in a second. But, yeah, to me, heroes are people that donate blood. Heroes, are to me, are people that share their story and listen to somebody and ask questions, logical questions, and say, how is this going to help you? So here's a logical question. How is listening to Kevin Brown, Mr. Hero here, Mr. Hero Effect, talk about how he grew his results in a franchising business? Um, and here's the thing. Here's the manipulation sentence right here. And let me make this big. Hold on. Here's the manipulation sentence right here. Um, as the father with a child with autism. That pisses me off. That's all I'm going to say. He knows firsthand of how the principles of true success reach beyond the boardroom and into the lives of real people facing challenges of everyday life. All right, here's a challenge of people in everyday life. Hi, Sam. People everyday life inside of the world of network marketing. Okay, I'm just going to go through what my daily routine was like when I was a paparazzi consultant. One, I would get up in the morning, check my Shopify to see if I had any orders made overnight. If I did, I filled them, got them ready to take to the post office. Then I would go to the post office. By the time I got that done and got home, my new shipment would have been delivered by Federal Express. So I would go through my new shipment look through the packages to make sure none of it was broken. If anything was broken, then I would, of course, submit my refund request to paparazzi so I could get a back office credit for the new releases that day. Um, and then I would prepare to go live to show what was in the box, to shop the box. Then at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, I would be online with three different tabs open, mm -hmm. three different tabs open to fill up my cart. And then I would refresh the app on my phone and check out because it was easier to keep the stuff saved in my phone and my phone had a faster connection. Yep. So then my challenge was collecting on invoices from the previous night's lives. And then I would constantly wait for that little ka sound to come on my phone for an order. Now, towards the middle of my paparazzi journey, um, I would get between 3 and 20 orders a day. My average was 11 orders a day on my website. Hi, Monique. But I was always like, oh, please let the Shopify sound go ka -ching. Please say that I'm getting money today. You know, and I, I spent money on Facebook ads and then I made my little Canva things or my pick monkey things to talk about what I was going to do, get my schedule, get my post ready, you know, and scheduled for future things. And then, you know, it, it was a life sat around, you know, I sat around working, loading things to my website, making sure orders got filled, preparing for lives. All of this stuff I did without getting paid, y'all, because the sales I made went right back into investing into my business. The power of 15, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? So yeah, those were my challenges. I never made any money, but I was working my ass off. 
And that's most people in network marketing. That's most people in paparazzi land. Um, you know, they talk about residual income. The only people that have residual income are those who have built a significant downline and they're living off of their purchases that th those people make. But the rest of us, we're losing money. And even some of those elites like Andrew and Will, they were still losing money. And then we have elites like, you know, E. And I'm just going to pull this up again. Um, who goes live and sells to her downline. So let me pull up all these posts. So give me a second to pull them up. You know, it's a pyramid within a pyramid. Okay, order your $8 exclusive black diamond piece. Payment due Friday, March 29th. It's a Timu special. You can get this exact same necklace on Timu. If you don't believe me, go look for Butterfly Choker. In fact, I'll do it right now. All right. So for everyone who buys from E, Butterfly Rhinestone Choker. Oh, where is it? I know it's up here somewhere. We've got this one for $1.61. We've got this one with the big chain for $1.98. We've got this one with three layers of rhinestones for $1.61. Yeah, it may not be exactly like paparazzi, but they have a lot of different styles. Okay, and I remember seeing one just like that. I mean, it's been a few months. But it's not the first time they've released that stupid butterfly choker. But Let's go back to this for a second. So, pyramid within a pyramid, y'all. Teresa Gordon Robinson bought three at $8 a pop. Sherry Monton bought four at $8 a pop. All of these people are uh, paparazzi consultants as well. Uh, Shelmira Clanton, also a paparazzi consultant, bought three at $8 a pop. Nicole Muhammad bought four at $8 a pop. Chanel Jones bought two at $8 a pop. Elizabeth Michelle Jacobs bought three at $8 a pop. Chandra Logan, four at $8 a pop. Ronnie Hartwell McKnight bought two at $8 a pop. Keisha Morris bought five at $8 a pop. Janika Lynch bought four at $8 a pop. Sandra Abraham bought two at $8 a pop. Now, I ask you guys, is that worth $8 a piece? I mean, we're using capitalism here. Is that worth $8 to you? To me, no. It isn't. And it's certainly not worth $2.75 to me when I can get something that has a few more layers of rhinestones on it, a few more butterflies. Maybe some real sterling silver for $1.61 or $1.99. Okay? But, you know, I digress. But butterflies and rainbows are all what paparazzi is about. Ugh. So, yeah. This is how paparazzi continues to take advantage of people. And I'm sorry, but... If I had my upline, and we saw a training the other day where uplines were saying, don't buy from your upline, I would love to see, hi, Beck. I would love, to, and Monique, I would love to see a certain upline elite tell her downline, do not buy from me. Do not, if you, if you were unable to se secure this piece, don't buy it. You can refer your customers to me to buy it, but the thing is, is she's re relentless and ruthless from what I've heard. This is hearsay. Uh, that she will try and poach her customers into becoming consultants. So people don't want to refer their customers to her. So they're willing to pay the eight bucks. It's toxic. It's a toxic... Uh, it's a toxic system. So Kevin is the best-selling author of The Hero Effect, his second book, Unleashing Your Hero. So he's written books. Gee, I wonder who else writes books. They're getting ready to go into that 
uh, motivational speaking circuit. Kevin is the best-selling author, blah, 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 blah. Kevin shares how heroes who have transformed his life are people just like you. People who are willing to use their gifts and abilities to serve others at a high level. This book and guide is to help everyday people to, to discover and unleash, and unleash their hero at work and in life. Don't miss this opportunity to learn how to expand your vision and develop your potential. Here's the thing, paparazzi consultant. Keynote speaker Kevin Brown, if you want to learn how to unleash your hero, go buy his damn book. Don't buy a ticket to go to convention, okay? Don't spend $245 to go to convention and then pay for airline tickets and a hotel room and then be conned into buying convention exclusive jewelry at the convention boutique and then you know don't buy all the other stupid stuff that comes you know from convention like swag if you really want to learn from kevin do yourselves a favor buy the book audible the book read the book you don't need to go to convention to learn from this amazing keynote speaker okay you can skip it in fact, I would, rec I would recommend that you do, because it's not worth going. Yeah, that's the thing is, these keynote speakers, it's very much learn how to leech off your downline. And, you know, I'm guessing that paparazzi's, you know, now paying for bottom of the barrel keynote speakers at this point, because, you know, that's my opinion. But yeah. I still think these things, <laughs> these pickleball paddle earrings over here, <laughs> that was a new release today. I, I like the idea of them being a pickleball paddle because they're just awful. All right, so let's go see what the founders have to say today. What's your favorite gift, new gift idea for teammates? Okay, so are we supposed to give new teammates gifts now? If that's the case, everyone in E. coli's downline should be getting a copy of her book, Broken Peepas. Peepas. <laughs> Broken Pieces Served My Purpose or something. I can't even remember the title. Um, that should be a gift. Uh, back office credit. Oh, well, that's generous of you. What does community mean to me to you, Trent? What does community mean to you? The relationship you build with others begins with yourself. Exactly. You have to know who you are before you can let other people know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, no one's going to get to know the true you. They will see sides of you that you want them to see, but they will never see the real you because you don't know who the real you is. So most people don't know who he is. I'm sure there are some free YouTube videos on my one by crap. Exactly. And if you want to hear, we just saw one, Debbie, but it was a snooze fest. I learned a lot from Julie. Which Julie? Julie Joe or Julie Anderson? Yeah, I, I wouldn't take advice from any keynote speaker. And, and that's just me. I would not take advice from any of these keynote speakers at um kevin brown speaks so professional speaker kevin brown so um i mean i'm by no means professional but i i i speak you guys speak am i a professional speaker now too no i'm just a person that's looking forward to watching taskmaster series 17 tonight on youtube <laughs> and binge watching the whole thing <laughs> I'm waiting for it to hit. Okay, so let's see. Um, da -da -da -da, Kevin's unconventional path to business and success taught him the hard work. Did they just take everything from his website? I believe they did. Oh, look, he's a family man with two floofies. Oh, let's read the testimonials. Oh, my gosh. Okay, um, Home City Ice Interlocks. Uh, let's see if there's any other MLMs. Visit Denver State Form, Informatech, uh, Univest, Georgia Credit Union. One of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, 
let's see, Superintendent Bryant School District, Success Group International, Hudsburg Diamonds. I'm looking to see if any of these people are like MLM companies that have given him a, a testimonial. I'm not seeing any yet. FPI Management, Water, Trans. Is Transmerica an MLM? I don't think it is. Uh, okay. Yeah, I love Julie Anderson, too. She's great. He's he's He is speaking. <laughs> I can't talk anymore. I think I'm done. He has spoken for Delta Airlines. Speaking and spoken. Emily can't talk anymore. Uh, precision door painting with a twist. Mutual Insurance of Omaha, Bristol Myers Squibb, California Travel Association, some credit unions. Oh, I'm not seeing any MLMs. He has spoken for a lot of big companies, but I haven't seen him speak for any MLMs that have given him a, a positive review. Ooh, so yeah. Primerica? Is Primerica an MLM? All right, let's go back up to the Primerica one. I mean, Transmerica is the one I was talking about. I didn't see Primerica on here. Transmerica was one, but there was no Primerica. Yeah. But, like, ugh. Sorry, if you need to have this many testimonials on your website, that's a problem, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Oh, what are his topics? Uh, let's see, the hero effect. Download topic one sheet. The hero effect leadership version. Download topic sheet. Should we? Should we download the topic sheet? Okay, the hero effect. Creating a culture of heroes at every level. Okay, let's let's <laughs> let's go into this one, shall we? Kevin has a simple philosophy when it comes to leadership. He believes that you are a leader of one or a leader of none. He believes that leaderships begin with mastering self, along with daily habits that require the required to become world class leaders, mentors, and coaches to the teams we teams we live and do business with. The foundation of the program can be summed up in one powerful idea. We produce what we are. Hmm. 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 No, let me go back. Hmm. Let me go back to the founders page for a second. Hmm. <laughs> the relationship you build with others begins with yourself. <laughs> This sounds like they took it right from his book. Hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> Don't join Primerica. I'm glad you didn't. I know I've had someone try to get me to join them too, but oh my god, thanks. The role of leadership in an organization is to create an environment where people can be the best versions of themselves. What is that is what serves as a brand well and stands out in a crowded marketplace. Does paparazzi stand out in a crowded marketplace? I don't know. This program is designed to help participants one create an environment where people are inspired to be the best versions of themselves and deliver a world class performance to the people they serve. Word salad develop a team of people that are committed focused, and on fire for the brand they are helping to build. Because it's our job to keep paparazzi open, right? Oh my god, this is, this is weird. Design and deliver organizational obsession statements that it drives high performance in a world-class customer experience. Wow. <laughs> this is all weird. I'm just like, Whoa. Okay, key themes. Here we go changing the voice. These are the key things. Heroes help people with no strings attached. They go all in every time they take the field. They understand that in business and in life, 
it's always personal and never perfect. What the hell? Okay, heroes create a strong connections and reach beyond the borders of transactional red flag thinking to create transformational moments. Oh, that sentence has so many red flags in it. <laughs> to create strong connections. Ooh. And reach beyond the borders of transactional thinking. <laughs> Becky, are you sending more TikToks? Hold on. <laughs> that was my phone being sent to TikTok. Yep, Becky's sending me TikToks. What are you sending me? I gotta look. Oh, I did see that one from Roberta today, and it makes me sad, too. But yes, I saw that. Thank you for sharing. But it is cringe. I already watched it this morning because I spend way too much time on TikTok. Okay, so heroes create an exceptional experience. The hero's calling card is pure excellence. It's about using their talents, gifts, and abilities to their fullest potential and highest purpose. And can I just add a little disclaimer here? Without pay. It's about using their talents, gifts, and abilities to their fullest potential and highest purpose without getting paid. Because that's what most people in multi-level marketing do. Well, then my phone's just a little slow because it said you shared a TikTok with me. All right. So, um, the hero uses the best of who they are to serve more people more often. In bigger and better ways. Um, the hero uses the best of who they are to serve more people more often in bigger and better ways. And a true hero does that without recognition, financial reward, or recognition. Full stop. That is what a true hero is. And I'm just... Oh, this makes me mad. The hero is committed to personal development and shows up better today than they were yesterday. What mind fuckery is this? Sorry, I, I apologize. Um, so the hero is committed to personal development and shows up better today than they were yesterday. Heroes build trust by serving others with authentic passion that turns everyday moments into superhuman experiences. The hero is driven to serve others and understands that the greatest rewards in life are determined by how well we take care of people we live and do business with. Okay, so heroes build trust by serving others with authentic passion that turns everyday moments into superhuman experiences. This is very multi-level marketing because you're a hero, paparazzi. You're a hero because you're driven to serve others and understand that the greatest reward in life is determined by how well you take care of people and how you do business. Regardless of if, if you get paid at all. So I, and, I, and Erica, you're 100% right there. And I take that, I take what you just said. She just said, this is brainwashing. Yeah, this is the keynote speaker at general session, at convention. This is a, this is a glimpse of what the brainwashing is going to be at convention. Heroes take responsibility. Heroes own moments that matter. They are actively present and engaged and do not believe in random acts of kindness. They are actively present and engaged and do not believe in random acts of kindness. Okay, um, everybody watching right now, let's talk about random acts of kindness. Um, share some of the random acts of kindness that have been shared with you. Um, in the last month. Okay, for me, knowing that five of you have donated blood or plasma. That, to me, is a random act of kindness. Okay? 
Um, another random act of kindness. There was a shopping cart, you know, sitting in a parking stall in the grocery store parking lot. Taking that shopping cart from that random stall and putting it in the shopping cart holder, that to me is a random act of kindness because it frees up a parking space for somebody and it helps the grocery store employee that has to gather the carts by not having to walk all over the parking lot to get them. That is a random act of kindness. Picking up a random piece of trash and throwing it away in the bin. You know, uh, paying for someone's coffee behind you. Um, giving somebody who looks like they're hungry something to eat. These are just examples of random acts of kindness, okay? Um, to me, I don't think um, I have to believe in those things. I think these are things that you should just be automatically thinking about doing because I think, I feel that the world is truly a kind place. There are truly kind people in this world. There are some people that are just purely evil and they they don't do things without self-enrichment or acknowledge or glorification. That is what I feel is evil. They want to be enriched by what they do or they want recognition for what they do. That to me is evil. Evil. Firemen, policemen, doctors, nurses. Yeah. Nurses. Oh my gosh. They do random acts of kindness all the time. Doctors. Yes. Yes. The person who lets you in when you put your signal on in, in traffic and they make room for you to merge. That's a random act of kindness. You know? That's nice too. Someone paid for your meal in a drive through It's like, yeah, that random act of kindness in an MLM, getting your downline to pay you for overpriced jewelry. Yes, that would be Erica's random act of kindness. Look, you guys, I have these pieces and you can buy them for me for $8. That's her random act of kindness. Don't say how it's transactional. Okay. Okay, so back to this. The hero is motivated instead by intentional acts of difference making. Intentional acts of difference making. So, so someone paying for someone's meal in a drive through is an intentional act of difference making? No, it, let me, let me, let me reread, let me uh, interpret this sentence. A hero is motivated instead by recognition for their act of kindness. They're motivated by recognition of their act of kindness for self-enrichment or acknowledgement or, you know, recognition. That's, that's how I'm reading that sentence, okay? They live by a simple code. Bring your best stuff to the present moment and pour it into the lives of others. Bring your best stuff to the present moment and pour it into the lives of others. So, okay, bring your best stuff. You guys, I'm just going to say this. That doesn't feel like a true, authentic, genuine person to me. Okay, because I don't feel when someone brings their best stuff, to the present moment is showing me their true self. I think they're putting on an act. I feel like they're being fake. I'd rather see someone be real and genuine and vulnerable than somebody who is always on all the time. Example. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome into my live. My name is Emily and I'm a paparazzi consultant. And hello, hello, hello. Leave a like on the stream. And if you do so, I'll give you five pieces of free jewelry to one lucky winner who shared out my stream today. Sorry, I can't. I can't do that. That's not me being my best self because that's not who I am. And 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 if if you're going to these conference to bring your best self to the present moment to pour into the lives of others I'm sorry I'd rather you dump it out on the sidewalk I don't need you pouring your fakeness into me just saying okay so back to this they understand that before you can lead anyone else you must be first be able to lead yourself yeah um I'm not leading anyone to anything I'm just showing people that it's okay to be real it's okay to be human 
It's okay to fall down. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and say, I'm never going to do that again. It's okay to say, oh my God, how stupid was I? It's okay to laugh at it. It's okay to say, I cannot believe I was that duped. But the same thing is, I'm not a leader. I'm just somebody who shares, hey, it's okay to be human. We're not perfect. We're real. And if that makes me a leader, I don't think so. But thanks for trying. Let's next. Okay. Uh, The hero owns their attitude. Um, Well, then I know somebody who doesn't own their attitude. I'm sure you guys, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys know who, who we're talking about. I sell jewelry, stupid. Anyway, uh, a hero owns their attitude, their actions, and their results. They are committed to the best possible outcome in every situation, regardless of circumstances or events beyond their control. The hero leads by example and knows that true success is found in the power of simple choices. All right. Okay. Let me catch up on comments. Random act of kindness in an MLM. Getting your downline to pay for overpriced jewelry. That is a lie. Most heroes don't like to be recognized. They always try to be anonymous. Yes, like the people that put, like, true gold coins in the Salvation Army jingle Santa Claus bin at Christmas time. Yeah, and... You shouldn't be worried about looking your best if you're being genuine. Exactly. It's a bunch of poppycock. I'm sorry. I don't need to have a perfect attitude towards myself to stand up for others. Exactly. If you see something wrong, you stand up to the the person being wrong. You know, that person and hero shouldn't be in the same sentence. Exactly. That type of person and hero should not be in the same sentence. Okay, so here's another thing about the weird logic of Kevin Brown. Heroes live and work with optimism. Heroes see the world differently. Oh, they do? Do they? Okay. For them, it's not about positive thinking. It's about perspective. Looking through the lens of optimism gives hero supernatural vision. (laughs) We have laser beam eyes. Supernatural vision. I mean, that's an epic fail right there. I'm sorry. No. Um, They see what others cannot. They see opportunities instead of obstacles. Um, um, I, I need to find another word for hero here. Let's try it this way. Manipulators see the world differently. For them, it's about, it's not about positive thinking. It's about perspective. Looking through the lens of optimism gives the manipulator supernatural vision. They see what others cannot. They see opportunities instead of obstacles. The possibility instead of problems. When things go wrong, and they will, optimism is what helps the manipulator Turn life's messes into a masterpiece. This is his bio. I think my word's a little bit more uh, on par with what I'm thinking. So let's keep going. His signature style, Kevin, uses his real life stories and examples combined with rich content and humor I wonder what his humor style is like. To drive home the manipulation effect principles and ideas. Because that's what it feels like this whole keynote speaker is. How to manipulate people and get them to bend to your will. This program delivers an actionable idea that every leader can implement immediately and begin begin creating a culture of excellence at every level in their organization. Ideal audience, this message is applicable, applicable to leaders. At every level, across all industries, Kevin customizes his stories and deliverables based on the audience profile. So is he going to talk about Chanel purses and and, uh, Burberry and 
Prada and Gucci and Chanel? Is he going to talk about all those luxurious items that no paparazzi consultant will ever be able to obtain? But, you know, they look at Carl and Nail Pierce and her Coco Chanel belt and Gucci bag and and uh, Erica Cole's Burberry jumpsuit and all the other stuff. I mean, I mean, is that the audience's profile? I don't know. Format. 45 to 60 minutes keynote can be followed by 60 to 90 minute deep dive into the actionable shared ideas during the keynote. Here's somebody's uh, thing. So I'm going to I'm going to replace the word with manipulation. I knew the manipulation effect was right on the message for the audience, but I was really impressed and delighted with how you connected to our core values and helped our audience relate to your message to all those terms. Well done. Okay. All right. So there's that one. Let's go to the other download, the manipulation effect for broader audiences. Oh my gosh, this is totally unbelievable. And I'm just like, yeah, this was an essay. It's an essay. It, this is his format to sell people into hiring him to do keynote speaks at their conventions and stuff. Okay. Um, he was a franchise owner at one point. I don't know what he franchised, but you know, we don't get details. We just get generalizations here. What companies has he been with? I don't know. I can look up his LinkedIn, but I don't want to. Yes, does not say an actual company. Just says he was a franchiser. Chanel was a leader, but if I leader, we even helped the wrong side exactly. They could all be knockoff designers. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people who made money in MLM won't admit it. They're just listed as authors when you Google them. Maybe that's the case with him. That would be my guess too, but it said on his actual bio that he was uh, he owned several franchise big businesses. So I don't know what businesses they were, nor do I care, but he, he made $2 billion. Ooh, ooh, oh. And now he's a, he's a speaker and an author. And he wrote books called The Hero Effect. All right, so let's read this one. And yes, um, we're going to read it with the hero word in it, but I, I still think hero needs to be changed to manipulator. Okay, so the hero effect being your best where it matters the most. In a fresh and entertaining style, Kevin shares his ideas, strategies, and principles that will inspire and equip participants to show up every day and make positive difference. Again, toxic positivity, everything with paparazzi, toxic positivity. At the heart of Kevin's message is simple, yet powerful philosophy for life that drives every thought, every action, and ultimately every result. We achieve both personally and professionally. Your team will be motivated to reach beyond what is required and do something remarkable. What is so remarkable? I don't know. This program is designed to help participants achieve a greater result by eliminating ordinary thinking and mastering the habit of excellence. Oh. <laughs> by eliminating negative thinking and mastering the habit of positive thinking. Right? Right? Okay. Bow, bow. Ding, ding, ding. I think so. All right. Owns the moments that matter. And they all matter. By taking responsibility for their attitude, their actions, and their results. Okay, uh, taking responsibility for their attitude, their actions, and their results. This, again, feels very brainwashy to me. And you guys know I've been reading the book. Uh, by taking responsibility for their attitude, are you being negative right now? Their actions. Are you not working your business 24-7, 365? And the results. Why aren't you getting sales? Are you not going live? Are you not doing what we've told you to do? Are you not doing the Cinderella challenge? Are you not doing Blinko? Are you not doing paparazzi roulette? Why aren't you trying all the things? We're giving you the tools. I mean, come on. This is this is it. Who's gone over to the dark side, Sam? So yeah. <clears throat> Create a meaningful relationship and deliver an extraordinary experience for every customer at work and at home. Okay, key themes. Heroes help people with no strings attached.
that's true. But now let's read what it says underneath it. Heroes help people with no strings attached, or should I say, with no strings attached, <laughs> exclamation point. They go all in. Oh, where have we heard that before, ladies? <laughs> Every time they take the field. They understand that in business and in life, it's always personal and never perfect. Heroes create strong connections and reach beyond the borders of transactional thinking to create transactional moments. So again, it's the same as the other download, uh, but this one tells you to go all in. Okay. The hero's calling card is pure excellence. It's about using their talents, gifts, and abilities to their fullest potential and highest purpose. Okay, does this... Is this the same as the other one? Let me see. Yeah, it's like the same thing. Does it? <sighs> We've already read this. So he can't even be bothered. To The PDF is the same. Oh my gosh. He can't even. He has an extra blurb on the top of the leadership one. But at the on the regular one, there's a paragraph missing. I cannot. Ugh. Paparazzi, you fell for this? You literally fell for this? You deserve what you get there. I can't believe that either. And when, you know, every time, and I'm, for those of you who are listening, um, Amanda Hug and Kiss just said, I can't believe with all the money EC has, she has to squeeze an extra $3 more out of her downline. To sell those exclusive pieces. Exactly. I don't get why she does it either. The only thing I can think of is that she spent a full $5 on those items. Buying them off of a replicated website for somebody. And she's selling them for $3 more to get her money back and then some. You know? So she can still make her 45% profit. <sighs> yeah, well, this guy, I don't, I don't really, I can't believe that paparazzi is like, did you get your ticket yet? Are you going to convention? Come here, Kevin Brown speak. And I'm just like, no, I don't think I want to hear this guy speak. But yeah, that's what we're talking about today. Do we have a new winner circle today? Oh, we do. Here we go, you guys. Let's see what... Let's see if uh, he's taking into account what Kevin Brown's telling you. He's wearing the same t-shirt as he was wearing last week. Did you guys just notice that? He's wearing the same t-shirt. Hello everybody and welcome to Winning Wednesday. We're so excited to be here with you guys. We love Wednesdays. We love it when we get to see and be with our friends. Okay, um, Summer, that jacket is just noisy. It's just noisy. And your ear crawlers look huge, but that jacket is a noisy mess. It doesn't look fun, even though it says fun on your lapels. I'm sorry. No, that looks like a disaster. And Trent, are you depressed or something? Why are you wearing the same shirt that you were wearing last week? It's here. We want to thank you guys for doing last week's challenge, for posting those pictures and going live in those pieces that you don't normally wear. It was a lot of fun to see a lot of you stepping outside of your comfort zone and pushing yourself just to try new things. Sometimes that it can be really scary is to try those new things, but we hope you had a lot of fun with it. It looked like you did. Keep doing it. I wouldn't Keep wear that jacket. What about you guys? Maybe you wouldn't normally wear and you will, you will see that there will, it will help sell them, but it will also open your eyes and your customers' eyes up to a whole new way of stylizing jewelry, but also pieces that you can mix and match with different fashions. It's noisy. Well, and that's the coolest part. You can take a, an outfit and make yes. it feel new by trying something different. Right, you can. Sometimes we feel right, like we're wearing the same things over and mm -hmm. over and over again. Add yes. a few different pieces of jewelry that are outside of your uh, comfort yes. zone, and yet, <laughs> it makes the outfit feel completely different. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, that is another fun challenge. It's not this week's challenge. So on, that, on that point, Rosie Path of Stones, if it's laundry day for Trent and he's wearing the same t-shirt that he was wearing last week, you know what would be good? If he put on the, the lion's mane urban piece that sold out yesterday. If he wore a piece of guy's jewelry, but I'm with you guys. He looks depressed and unhappy. Take it, but 
What you can try doing is wearing a... Or extremely stressed out. Not sure which one. Just a black or white t-shirt and stylizing it with all different kinds of jewelry and you will see how it will change the look completely as you yeah, change up the jewelry. Dress it up, dress yes, it down, make it absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Add splashes of color. I think he's bored. Just I think have, he's bored like, with his company. Something. Maybe we'll do that for a future challenge, but just You can do that, that challenge today if you want. I mean, no, that's up no. to you. I don't want to take I don't I mean, want to steal your show. thunder. No, oh, this oh, it's is my this show. is your show. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just the thought that fake, came to me we're talking about that. So that's something you can do, but it is not this week's challenge. I know this guy right here. That was so fake. And it, oh. <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, they are so fake. This is so scripted. Life is scripted with these people. Here's got something great cooked up for She's you. She's always trying to steal my thunder and always just trying. change things up. I know, but, I uh, know. Don't worry. Next time, I'm just going to keep talking, not even give you a chance. That's fine. That's I know. Fine. That's I figured you were nodding. With it. No, nope, we're good. We're good. So, but let's hear what this week. All right, this week's is. challenge is great. Speaking of stepping outside of your uh -huh. comfort zone, uh, a lot of times we don't like change, or or we don't like to learn new systems. Mm -hmm. Um, I call bullshit. We don't like change, and we don't like to learn new systems. Um, change is hard to adapt to, but change is inevitable it's a part of life life is things are constantly changing you have to learn how to adapt to change and one way to learn how to adapt to change is just go with the flow and learn new things but um i don't believe that statement i think that's a lie even if there's a system that can help us and so uh as many of you that came to emp as many of you that uh at convention and throughout the the last year or so the uh, dorks have been yes. training and showing a new app, a new, a new system called Premiere. Mm -hmm. And it's a piece of shit app. I'm sorry, but the whole reason you guys came out rather quickly, mind you, with Paparazzi Premiere is because you were asked to show where the end product was going, where the product was ending up, with end users or with other consultants. And guess what? All your elites who sell to their downline still keep their regular apps like Square, Shopify, Comment Sold. They keep their their separate stores because they don't want to show that they're selling to their downline 99 or more percent of the time. I mean, I've watched a lot of the live shows and I've done the research and seen who's buying from Trent, who's buying from Erica, who's buying from Mandy, who's buying from this person, who's buying from this person. And it's like at least 20% of the people are actual end users, while the other 80% are other consultants. So people don't want to use Premiere because, one, it's too expensive. Two, they don't want all of their personal information on it, including their banking information. And three, they feel it's a violation of their privacy. So, yeah, if they don't want to use Premiere, that's not their problem. That's a you problem. Mm -hmm. Premiere is a fantastic app and Oh, and sell it to me, Trent. Sell it to me hard. And, business. and now many of you look at it and say, well, but I have my, my way of selling mm -hmm. or I have my way of doing this or I have my way of doing that. And that's fantastic. You can keep doing it that way. Uh, one of the things that I love the most about Premiere, one of the things that I believe it is your best resource mm -hmm. is that Premiere is really, it's a great accounting app or, or system control yes. Uh, app that allows you to invoice. It Is allows it really you though? to uh, inventory product mm -hmm. if you'd like. It allows you to sell if you'd like yes. through that app. But the thing I like most about it is the invoicing ability and the simplicity of when you order product, mm -hmm. you can automatically put that through to invoices to your customers. Now you have to invoice no matter what. Right. So many of you that don't have a great system, this is an easy alternative that you do have to learn a little bit. And that's what this week's challenge is going to be. Step outside of your comfort zone. On the Dork's uh, Facebook page, they've for the last year, basically, yeah. uh, they've had all kinds of trainings and, and they talk about different things. Uh -huh. In your back office, under the resource tab, there is all kinds of trainings on it. And they're going out into different cities throughout the country. This week, uh, they're headed to Virginia and Dallas, I mm -hmm. believe, yes. are the two cities. So you should be going to Paparazzi Dorks 
And yeah, should I go back again and listen to that? Because he's just like, uh, we need to control you. So let's go back and listen to him again. This week's challenge. Going to be step outside of your comfort zone. On the Dorks uh, Facebook page, they've, for the last year basically, yeah. uh, they've had all kinds of trainings and, and they talk about different things. Uh -huh. In your back office under the resource tab, there is all kinds of trainings on it. And they're going out into different cities throughout the country. This week, uh, they're headed to Virginia and Dallas, I mm -hmm. believe, yes. are the two cities they're headed to, but there's other cities coming up. But no matter what, the challenge this week is just to familiarize yourself with mm -hmm. it. I'm not even gonna try to convince you to do it. But what I want you to do, familiarize yourself with it and just see, maybe this is an invoicing system that would make it easier for me. And, and a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, why, why are we so concerned about making, that's an epic pause too, by the way. <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> why are we working so hard to make things easier for people now? I mean, because honestly, it's not easier, okay? Uh, catching up in your comments. Uh, I never see Trent in any paparazzi jewelry. I, you know, I would, I'm, I'm challenging Trent to put on some paparazzi urban jewelry and, and show men a paparazzi what it's all about. But I have never seen him in a paparazzi men's ring or a paparazzi men's necklace or anything. I've never seen him in any paparazzi jewelry. Just stop telling sell it to me hard. <laughs> Sorry, Anastasia. I think they are getting desperate to hang on to reps. Um, I was going to tell you guys this yesterday, but I, I squirreled out. And as I was re-listening to the live from yesterday, um, we, we're almost at 1,700 people. Um, you know how my subscribers are like in the 1400s, which still blows my mind to this day that I've been monetized almost a year. Um, but, um, 1700 people have reached out to me to tell me that my message resonated with them. We're almost there. We're almost to 1700. I have reached out to me and told me that they left the company or they avoided signing up or they convinced somebody they knew from joining the company or quitting the company, something along those lines. So I said this yesterday in the live, I keep saying the same thing over and over and over again because uh, consistency is key and repetitive messaging works. But, you know, I have helped almost, almost there, you guys. We are almost there. 1,700 people have reached out to me and told me that they've left this multi-level marketing company. That's a lot of people, you guys. That's a lot of people that have heard the message. Now, they don't all have to be subscribers, and I don't expect them to be. Just like I said, you don't have to subscribe to the channel. You don't even have to be a member of the channel. I just keep making this comment be content because... The message is getting out there and we are resonating with people and they eventually open their eyes up, look around them and say, okay, I think I'm in a place where I need to really look at things. And I know it's hurting them as a company, but yes, this is awesome. So that's why I want to keep doing this. And I have to say congratulations to all of you because it's because of all of us here watching this channel right now, it has nothing to do with me. You guys are the reason I keep making the content, but it's because of you guys sharing the content, sharing your message, sharing your truths with me and me being able to share your truths with others that we've been able to make a little, it's probably 1% of the total number of consultants they've ever had. But still, that's 1% of the number of consultants that they've had that quit or didn't even join. And that's success. I have an idea that you have to load all of your inventory yeah. first. You don't. You don't. You can actually put it in as you go invoice by invoice. And you shouldn't have inventory. If you are truly a business person, you shouldn't be carrying an inventory. Inventory does not equal success. Excess inventory is dead money. If you have more pieces, then you can reasonably sell. If you are carrying inventory month after month, year after year, 
you know, if your inventory that you bought three months ago is still sitting in your inventory today, you're doing it wrong. You should not be having inventory that's over three months old. And you should not be replenishing that inventory until the inventory you bought three months ago is gone. So, someone's calling me or something because my phone's like making my microphone wig out. So, but anyway, yeah. That's, that's just the thing. You should not be carrying an inventory. And I just wanted to jump yeah, in on jump that in. since I like to steal your thunder off. Absolutely. The well, I, you're the one that knows it all. <laughs> I'm just up here shooting from the hip. Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I was talking to one of our Pink Diamond sellers, and she... Pink Diamond buyers. ...has switched over to using a lot of Premier for her invoicing and she before in her old way of invoicing would take three to four hours to invoice. She said she invoiced the other night and it was a half hour. That right there shows you the time it's going to save and, and how easy it I call bullshit. can be. And if you've got your thing that's working great and you don't even want to switch or you don't yeah. even want to. If, if she truly, if she truly, you know, she's saying it's a pink diamond seller. Okay. If she truly, truly, truly wanted to name drop she wouldn't just say pink diamond she would have said a name she would have said the name of the person who did that but notice she kept the name out of it because she's lying to you right now paparazzi she's claiming some sort of pink diamond seller is using the paparazzi premiere app but yet she doesn't bother to tell you the name because she doesn't have a name because she doesn't have a pink diamond seller using paparazzi premiere so she's full of shit. A look at it, that's your prerogative. I would always take a look at something. If, if right. other people think that it works, um, you know, what do you have to lose? Take a look at it, see if it can help. Right. Because this, this pink diamond Wrong. seller probably had heard about it, probably had uh -huh. even attended some of the trainings, EMPs, whatever it mm -hmm. is, and for whatever reason hadn't taken a look at it because it's different. Nobody likes change. No, it's always scary. Change is always scary, but then it's like what we've talked about, stepping outside of your comfort zone, yep. and that's where you're going to grow. So this week's challenge, yes. step outside of your comfort zone, jump into the resource mm -hmm. tabs, jump onto the Facebook trainings, or if you're in uh, Virginia or Texas, Dallas area, feel free to jump into one of those trainings. Yes. Um, but there is a resource that is readily available to so, uh, jump into a training, but don't you have to pay to jump into that training? So if you're in Virginia or Dallas, you have to jump into the training? No. So this is, Winter Circle is encouraging you to buy a ticket to training or to sign up for Premiere and pay for the Premiere app. No, just no, 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 no. To you, that can help you. And like I said, I'm, an, I'm a numbers guy, I'm an accounting guy. I believe it's a great way Exactly, to that's why she didn't say the name, Denise. Accounting system. Um, and if you have somebody that does that for you already in your business, fantastic, give them homework, make them go learn yes, it. Exactly. You don't even have to do anything. Yes. <laughs> but get them to take a look at it because it is a, it a readily available, powerful tool that is sitting there waiting for you to check it mm -hmm. out. Yes, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to try it. And it's a ready, available, powerful tool. It's not a drill. It's not a jackhammer. It's an app that crashes. And it was an app that was poorly designed and designed on the fly. And I don't know how many app updates you've had, but it's frustrating. It's frustrated a lot of your early users. I mean, you keep hyping this crap up, but um, no. Just to play around with it and experiment with it. Yeah, prove me wrong. Right. Just prove me that right. it, that is not a good idea. I don't want to prove you wrong because I've proven you wrong so many times. I've proven you wrong with uh, your website and the sign-up process. I've proven you wrong with a bunch of other things. Um, and yeah, I'm looking at, that is like an evil pause. That's like an evil, <clears throat> and he looks like the devil right there. Um, I have proven Poppy wrong. Paparazzi wrong on so many things. And Katie, I'm right there with you. You're not alone. But the things I've proven paparazzi has been wrong on, they have adjusted and or fixed. And I will continue to speak out and call them out on their BS so they can fix and adjust. But here's the thing. 
If you don't want to use the Paparazzi Premiere app, you don't need to use the Paparazzi Premiere app. Idea for you, um, and go out there and see, and then make sure that it's not a good idea for you. Right, right. But it's always good to test all options. Just yeah, lizard yeah. lizard. Yep, lizard. All right. <sighs> so your quote for today. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. Fantastic. Yeah. What do we become by achieving our goals? Master manipulators. So, so set a goal to learn Premiere. Right. And see what you become. Oh, I like that. Oh, sorry. Fuck me. <laughs> so set a goal to learn Premiere and then see what you become. That is so Sandy. Oh, that is so wrong. <laughs> yeah, Look at that. That's why we keep him around. Yeah, that's <laughs> impressive, people. <laughs> all right. We will see you guys next week. Have fun learning all about Premiere. I'm sorry, but, um, no. It's, uh, Set a goal to learn Premiere and then do yourself a favor and realize that it's a lose-lose situation and you need to get out. You need to get out of this company as quick. Run. Run, run far, far away. You know, uh, just like April Fashion Fix is going to drop in eight days, but you can get these same stupid things on Timu. I found the necklace yesterday. Fairy Tale Frost is the uh, fashion fix for Fiercely Fifth Avenue, but... Magnificent Musings, I have found the entire Magnificent Musings set on Timu. Uh, this thing, you could make it if you get a bead kit from Walmart. Uh, Timu, found those. Uh, why would you want those anyway? Um, and again, like, these are the sets that are... All of this stuff here is your $90 once a month. You could buy $90 worth of the Magnificent Musing set and a bunch of other stuff on Timu and get a lot more for a lot less. So, all right, you guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. It was so much fun, but guess what? The chills are starting to kick in again. It must be getting close to 3 o'clock. I don't know what it is about 3 o'clock, but my body decides to go into full-on chills. So it's time for me to go hit up the uh, electric blanket and the heating pad and snuggle up with Ellie. So that's what I'm going to do. So yeah. All right, you guys. So yes, um, keep sharing the message far and wide. Thank you so much for being here and being you, being real, not perfect. And today, just to wrap up, if you missed it from the beginning, we did sneak peeks with Misty. We did uh, a review of the Mother's Day category. Then we talked about the Dare to Dream keynote speaker and his master manipulation brainwashing topics that he's going to talk about during convention and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, ugh, so gross, so bad. So anyway, um, yeah, sad and depressing stuff. Oh, I have to go to an HOA meeting tonight, so I better go warm up before I have to head out of the house with David later. So wish me luck. I'm not thrilled about this. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your day, okay? All right. Bye, you guys. And I'm going to throw up the member shout-out screen. <laughs>